Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's webinar. Today's webinar is on improving your quoting process to increase order value, frequency and overall efficiency. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kirsty Morris and I'm a Premier Customer Success Manager here at Prospectsoft. So I look after the customers that have purchased a Premier Customer Success Plan with us um, and reach their goals with them. So the agenda for today is uh, creating workflows to standardize the quoting process. So looking at pipelines for quotes and opportunities to standardize your quoting process across the board. Looking at how to duplicate quotes and copy lines for ease of use of the quoting process. Configuring upsell links for products. So prompting all of your users to upsell where possible. Grouping, uh, grouping quote lines um, for ease of use of uh, products that are linked within quotes, implementing the quote to order workflow buttons on your um, email templates, storing uh, product documents within the CRM library and how to create products that aren't already in the system. So the key takeaways from today's session will be take more orders and save time, learning how to get from quote to order faster and taking more orders in less time every time. Enhancing customer experience, so deliver a smoother experience for your customers right from the moment that they receive the quote and how they confirm and pay for their orders. So making the whole process a lot easier and a lot more streamlined. And reducing errors and confusion, so eliminating areas of inaccuracy, so being able to copy and duplicate quotes where needed and internally increase the internally to increase the accuracy and validity of um, orders. So for today's demo, I'll take you through to our demo system, which is all about Jam. It's called That's My Jam. So all of the scenarios that you'll see today are talking about Jam products. So first of all, we'll look at quotes um, and the pipelines that come with quotes. So you can either go to the global create button at the top and you can create a quote from there. Or alternatively, we advise to search for the contact that you need to place the quote under. So for this scenario, I'm gonna to go to Michelle Jury, who is of Browns of Ipswich. Michelle is linked in here, so you've got all of her details, and then you would create a quote underneath Michelle. That way you then have all of the levels of the hierarchy and every time you're sending a communication, it's linked to Michelle and Michelle's email is there. So you go to the small plus button and create a new quote. So for this one, I'll do a test quote uh, and I'll change the salesperson. So you can select a pipeline for the quote. So this is to do with your opportunity pipeline as well. So there is a previous webinar that we did an in in-depth review of how to set up your opportunity pipelines, but I'll run through a quick way of um, editing these two. So you can select this, whether it's a contact customer, whether you, the way that that opportunity has come through. So it could be new business completely. Somebody could have given you a call and you could just put it through as a new business, or it could be repeat business for a customer that's already ordered from you. So these are loads of different types of pipelines that we've got set up in the system already. And you can configure these by going to the quick configure button at the bottom. And this takes you to the opportunity pipelines. So you can create a new one and we can call it a test pipeline for this scenario. Create that one and it will come up in the list. When you go to the edit button, you can then add all of the statuses that are in here as well. So we can add statuses that are already here. So it could be qualified, quote. For this scenario, we're doing all about quoting. So you could be qualified, quote, it's in process, awaiting PO. And then you can update it. So that will then drop all of your statuses that that pipeline follows through. So what you're really trying to think about here is the process in which you want to repeat for all of your sales team to follow. So every single time that the customer calls in, they're getting the same repeat process, getting from 
question all the way through to quote all the way through to order so you want to have that pipeline streamlined because then you can report on where all of your opportunities are and all of your quotes are within that pipeline then you add the closing statuses which are lost dead or lost cancelled dead or one so you can change these however you would like to add those in there and then you've got your closing statuses so that will then tell you once you've confirmed a quote it is then one if they have cancelled the order you can change that and it then logs it as cancelled in the system so once i've set that one up here what i can do is go into the test pipeline so for this scenario i'm going to do the test and you can see that the first status in that list is awaiting po then you've got all of the different closed statuses. So this is what happens once it's either confirmed, lost or dead, so that you're not keeping loads of quotes in, qualified, etc. So if we go to um, based on, so this touches on where, how you can copy old quotes or you can copy lines, etc. over it. Or if you want a customer's called you and it's a repeat business, they want to literally duplicate an order that they had before, you can actually search the old order in here. So you would click search, you would find their old order number, uh, and then you would put it into, into here. So this one, test quote, and this, you can select here to say recalculate pricing and discounts because if your prices have changed since they last ordered, you would like to recalculate it. If they're going to stay the same, you can um, authorize for it to stay the same and not select recalculate pricing and discounts. When you confirm that, you can then create. So that's copying the old order into a new one and then all of the items are here. The other way to do a um, copying and pasting is what you can do is find an old the old order number. Let's delete these ones out because we're probably going to end up copying both over. So if I find the old order in the system, so the customer may have called and said, "I've I've already got this order. Can we please just copy it over? I want to reorder that." Find that in here. And then you can go to the three dots on that order and then copy lines to clipboard. You can select which ones you want to pull over. So it may be some or all of that quote exactly, and then click copy. Make sure that your um, browser does allow copying to clipboard because I had that issue earlier. So um, please make sure that you're, it's copying and then you can go back to the other one. I come out of there and then I go to the three dots on the new quote and paste rows. So you can then import those products into the system. So as you can see, all of the old products are in here and they've just pulled them through same quantities, same pricing that you've selected and that's now on the quote. So that allows you to be able to copy old quotes or duplicate quotes or orders that have happened in the past, making it really easy um, and less clicky for all of your customers. And you don't then have to find and search for each product in there. So if we go to this order, potentially you can, if you've got a quote set up, a quote template set up in your email, you would may like to group your products. So it could be that all of the equipment for jam making is at the top and then all of the jam products to make jam is at the bottom and you want to group them into. So it's really clearly set out for your customers. So what you can do is go to the add products drop down and then click add group. So then what we'll do is select which products you want in that group and you can title it to say jam making equipment. and then click save. So this then groups your orders in here. So then if I were to add blueberry jam, it would then create an ungrouped version. So then I could add strawberry jam as well. And then I can create a group here and that clicks those two in that ungrouped section and I can say jam. 
then when your customer receives their quote, they will then have all of the products grouped in the way that you want them to. And it's really clearly visible on the um, quote order email. And then it goes through into the, the customer for you. You can also, and this is a system setting, you can actually add products or create new products, sorry, on the, in this process. So for example, if your customer calls up and says, I would like a mismatch of products, so strawberry and blueberry jam mix, you could then on a whim quote that without having to actually have that product already created in the system. So you can create it on a whim so that you can then quote the customer really quickly. So if I just go back a step, sorry. At the bottom here, you've got create new product. That's actually a system setting. So maybe in your system, it's not already set up and an admin user can do that. So you go into the system settings and you would then select product, uh, add products. And you would then create that. So then that drop down comes down. Obviously, if you don't want all of your users to be able to add or create new products on a whim, then please don't turn this on. But it's the options there if you've got customers that do just ask for things that are a little bit out of the box. So if I click create new product and I do, this is based on jam. Search for products and it's on blueberry jam. Pack a four blueberry jam. Then I can change the name and say, this is actually a pack of eight blueberry jam. Or blueberry, blueberry and strawberry mix. And then you've got all of the details there. So you can say that the sale price is going to be £16 and the cost price is this. And then your tax code would be 20%. And then you would click create. Sorry, you need to change the SKU code. So blueberry, strawberry. So now I've got a new product in here that is a slightly a slight mismatch of um, jams in there. And then you can move this up into the jam. So that then falls into the jam group because it's just a different type of jam. So then once your quote has been done, you can then send the quote out to the customer by clicking the email here. And if you've previously watched our quote to order workflow webinar, it takes you through how to get the quote to order buttons into your quote templates. So we have these already set up as a, as, as a template. So I've got a basic quote email and this basically splits out. We don't have the grouping on this template, but you can add grouping in. So the, the template will split out per group. And then you've got these buttons here, which mean that your customer can literally click approve or decline on the quote, and that process will then confirm into the CRM. So if you would like to reduce the amount of contact that the customer has, they don't want to have to ring you or email you back to say that they would like to go ahead with the quote. They, you add these quote to order workflow buttons at the bottom of your template, and then they will be able to approve it on there. There are options as well so that you can just have approved because some people don't like giving customers the option to decline, um, but you can choose which one you would like on there. And there is a whole other webinar. So we'll send that out at the end uh, of this webinar for you to be able to view that how to. But once you've got these on here, you then click send and that quote has been sent out to the customer. There's another area as well that we'd like to cover, which is upselling products. So if your customer has come on and they've ordered loads of jam jars, but they haven't ordered the lids, it would be recommended that whenever they order jars, they also order the lids at the same time. So you can set up in the system to be prompted for these upsell 
upsell items. So if we go into products and select, uh, sorry, search for jars. And then go to the upsell icon at the end, at the side, sorry. And then add here. I can search for lids. So you've got three different types of link types. So this is a must sell. So every time you sell a jar, you have to sell a lid to go with it. You would put that as must sell. So it automatically, when you add this to a quote, it will automatically also add the lids to that. You've got recommended, so it pops up and says, would you like to add? So this is when you're on the phone to the customer, you can say, right, we recommend that you would buy lids with this. Do you want me to add them to your basket as well? And then it would pop up with that. Or you can have the upgrade. So if you potentially have a different type of jar, so you've got one that's like a basic standard type of jar, and then you've got a really deluxe type of jar. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to work out um, different types of upsells but if you've got a product that would be more superior to the one that they're ordering you can put that as an upgrade so it prompts to say would you like to upgrade to this one it's slightly more expensive for example but there are the options so for this one i'll do recommended click create and then you know that that is linked as a recommended product so checker jam jar lids every time i add this product to it will pop up as a recommended item So if we go to the quote and then search for the product that I just added, it pops up with the recommended products is checker jam jar lids. And then I can select, yes, I would like to add these. Click continue and then it pops through. So then it adds both of them on there. If you click no and click continue, then it will still, it won't add them into the basket. And then we've got using the library. So we have, for those of you who don't know, we have a full document library within the CRM, which enables you to add brochures or tech sheets or anything like that to your quotes. And it will add it as a PDF, a Word document, or it can add it as a link at the bottom of your quote. So if you've got a product that needs to go out with a manual, for example, you can add these in here and link them to the products. So in this, it works in the same way as a file explorer within pretty much any, any PC. So you would just click new folder and then create a new folder for, I'm just going to call this test folder jam. And then whilst this is highlighted, you can then create a subfolder by selecting new folder again. And then I'll put jam products. And then if you wanted to drill down even further, you can then put it down into per product, for example. But this is really easy to use. You can either drag and drop files in. So if you've got them all saved, you can select a couple and you can drag and drop them into here. Sorry, you have to drag them into the box. And then it uploads your files. Give it a second because I did two at once. <laughs> so now you've got product A specification in here and product B specification. You can also add them by a file explorer and add files in here. And then that will pull up and you can add them in that way. You can also create a link. So if you've got a link to a um, SharePoint, for example, you can put that in there and then that will create a link on there as well. So this is the how to use the file library. So if I go into this product specification document, you can then link your product. So for example, 
this product here and this specification document will probably may only go to one product, but it may be multiple different products. So you can just go in, add, add in the jam maker, create, and then that product document is linked to this product. So every time you quote it, it will then add it into your, once you've got the template set up, it will then add it into your emails. It can then link it at the bottom. So it's really easy. So all of your users don't then have to go in and find all of the specific product specifications every time a customer asks for one. You can literally go in here and search for them or you can add them to quotes. So every time you're quoting it, you're making sure you're sending out the technical data sheets, for example, and then doing it that way. Or it could be that you add in brochures. So if a product range has got a brochure, you can then add that in there. So for customers, when you're quoting, they've got all of the details on the, those products that you have quote, now quoted. So I've taken you through a, a slight process of how to do the quotes, the different functionality in here, copying and duplicating, et cetera. So the key takeaways, again, um, being able to take more orders and save time. So being able to duplicate orders and copying those orders into the CRM from other areas. Um, you can. It, it means that you're not having to do too many click throughs. And if you've got the click through buttons on the quote to order, it means that you're, you're not having to chase those orders and your customers then have that responsibility to be able to click approve. And then it all does the, the system does that for you. Also with the pipelines, you're then creating a full pipeline that all of your customers will experience. So every single salesperson, whether they're new or old, can follow the same status profile through and it, it follows that pipeline all the way through to the end of the order. And then being able to copy uh, is going to reduce a lot of errors because you know that the customers have, have got their prices already, potentially from an old order that they had, and you can just copy and paste that over. So reducing errors and the confusion for customers um, and making a full internal process that works well for you. So questions. Yeah, we actually had a hand up from somebody in the audience. Um, I won't say their name in case they want to be anonymous, but um, I don't know if you want to pop your question in the chat or I think we can allow you to talk if you're happy with that. Um, but in the meantime, there's one in there from Alex, I believe, um, which you can take first, Steve. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. So is it possible to attach a hyperlink to a product on a quote which could take the customer to a PDF of the catalog page for that item. So you would make need to make sure that the product um, catalog page is in your library. And then at the bottom, if I take you back to um, the quote. So as long as the product page or the brochure page or the PDF is in your library, you can add the document as a hyperlink rather than a, rather than an attachment in here. So it would just mean that the customer clicks on this, but it's coming from the library. So there's a SharePoint there for it to be able to access. So that is possible. Can we collect the delivery address when the customer accepts the quote? At the moment, no, uh, because the there's an issue. Well, there could potentially be an issue if they change the delivery address and the distance potentially changes um, or the, the courier charge goes up. There's no way of changing that at the point of confirmation. So, for example, if you are quoting a customer and they are based in Oxford, and then they decide to change their delivery address to Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland. There's no way for us to change or edit or recalculate that quote based on where the delivery is at the moment. But it is a good idea. So what I would do is uh, log it um, on our ideas portal because we do push quite a lot through our ideas portal into um, our development. So 
it's definitely something we can look into if you if you've raised a idea already uh, and then vote on it that way how do we change so the next question is how can we change the description after we've created a part number and realized the part number has been wrong So at the moment, we are we have actually pushed um, an item through into our development to be able to update the description within the CRM. So obviously, if you create it on a whim, it then pushes it into your ERP system. And then that's where it's stored. It's created as a new product. And there is only one way of feeding that through into um, the system at the moment. So it's come, most of the product descriptions are coming from the ERP. But in the, I think in the next six to nine weeks, we have got a um, the ability to bulk update or import update the product description. So if they are wrong or need to be changed, then you can um, you can do that. So that is coming, but it's not currently available. I would suggest doing it in your ERP system or inventory management system, and then it will pull through into Prospect Soft. So while we're waiting for a couple more questions, Kirsty, um, something you touched on earlier was about the quote to order workflow buttons and about removing the sort of decline button. And as you say, some customers sort of prefer that. But um, one thing I just thought I shared this this little testimony we had from one of our customers, Tom from Brunel. He said um, it's been a really good improvement to the operation, and he's been surprised about the number of customers that have actually used the approved link. Um. When the approved button is selected, they receive an acceptance notification, then orders automatically appear in their system, system, which saves their sales team considerable time. And he was apprehensive about including the decline link at first, but he's actually found that it's improved um, or provided, sorry, but provided them with some valuable feedback and opportunity to revise the quote if they wish. So um, something that they wish they, they'd implemented sooner and I say that it would recommend to anyone who hasn't implemented just yet. So yeah, I think that, that decline button can also give you some some sort of feedback um kind of in real time as to as to why and then they can make changes and, and kind of go again and, and resend the quote. So um worth worth considering keeping on there I think if if you can and, and kind of get that feedback and see what you can do about the quotes. Um yeah. I thought I'd just share that. And there was a couple of items that I spoke about on uh, the the webinar the, in the system settings. So the first one is grouping. So you can enable or disable the ability to group products. So this is if it's not available and that little drop down isn't available currently within your CRM, I would speak to an admin user who would be able to enable or disable the the grouping ability within the CRM. So if it's disabled, you won't be able to group products, but if it's enabled, you can do that and add the groups in there. The second one is um new like creating new products. And it's a enable product creation in the system settings. So you can see here that you can enable it or disable it. Obviously, um, if a if all of your users have got product manager roles, they can create products. Um, but if they don't, then then they can't. So each, enable or disable. A lot of customers do actually create all of their products in the ERP system, which is why this probably would be disabled. But this enables you to if you've got customers that contact you with bespoke requests or things that are a little bit outside of the box and aren't necessarily a stock item or if it's sort of made to order you can then create the products this way by enabling this this function here as well so i've got another question we have prospect linked to zero if a product is added on prospect or product grouping is added, would this pull through to zero? So the product creation does, um, the product grouping wouldn't. So the product grouping is just for visibility for your customers, customers to be able to see how those products are grouped together. So it would all come through to zero as a full order with all of the products split out on there and, and no grouping. 
this is more for if you are grouping it and sending it as a quote and the customer can then see a group of products but the product would go through so if you've created a product using this function on a whim it would then create that product and use that product code within your erp system so yeah Perfect. So I just double check the registration questions. Oh, sorry, we've just got another one. Uh, I understand on the product creation, the option to input the cost in other currencies, for example, euro is coming soon. Do we have an update on when that might land? And would it also be an option to create the sell price from the drop down margin? So you can create the, um, if we go into the order again, and create new product based on the So you can create the cost price in here and then the sell price in here. Um, but we don't, you don't have a margin as such because you would add the margin on at the quoting stage. So you would have the price and the discount available and you can set up margins on uh, within the system. I'm not sure if that fully answered your question, Alex. Um, but the euro being able to add the cost price in at euro is coming um but i'll have to check on offline uh when that is due to land perfect so i'll just check i think all questions that were previously submitted were actually answered so yeah, that's the end of the webinar, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining. If you have any requests of um, things that you would like to see in the upcoming series of the webinars, we are doing new series all the time. So if you've got any things that you would like to see, then uh, please let us know. Um, sorry, there we've just got another question. Sorry, another couple of questions. Um, can we add a product picture to several inventory items at the same time? Jess, you might be able to answer this one. Can we do multiple images? Well, one image to multiple products at the same time. I think you can do it. Can you do a bulk upload or not on images? double check so I think we might have a guide on that for you Andrew so um we can ping you that yeah we'll send you a this. guide if we've got one um but I will follow up with you Andrew just to um check on the on those ones and then we've got a question did you say we'd be able to quote in euros yeah you can already quote in euros you just have to select the currency um but i'll get a guide sent through on that as well raquel so that you can go into it in more detail in where to add um if the product's already in euros or if the customer's in uh, needs to be quoted in euros you can already do that within the crm perfect so yeah if you do have any ideas for these webinars please let us know um but thank you again so much for joining Everyone take care.